All right, you guys. This is not a joke, what I'm about to show you and tell you. We just stuck a nice muskie. Came in to get some snacks out of the truck because we forgot them. And what we found when we walked up to Jason's truck is that somebody broke in and completely smashed out his window. Yeah, that window's not open. It's completely smashed and destroyed. See that? All that glass? don't even know where to begin with this Tennessee trip if you haven't already gone to my website justkeepcasting.com go check it out go read my blog but the last post I just put up has most of the details in regards to what happened on this very eventful Tennessee trip but I'm just now realizing that I actually forgot a few details so I just wanted to give you guys a quick play-by-play -play as to what happened what went down with me and Jason in Tennessee um, so just bear with me. Please watch the whole video. I know it's gonna be longer than usual But it was just unbelievable. So watch it all. I do catch a nice muskie. You'll see that But a lot more crazy and funny just hysterical stuff went down. So here we go First thing that happened was on the way down there Me and Jason were in a deep conversation and we just weren't paying attention and we ran out of gas so we broke down on the way there and then we get there and on day one our first day there crazy thunderstorms couldn't fish for about an hour and a half finally got out to fish and it didn't take much longer than about an hour and i stuck a really nice muskie my first tennessee fish and got it on film so that was awesome that was kind of my goal going down there but i had no idea what was in store for us because shortly after we landed that fish jason realized that we had left our snacks in the truck so we wanted to head back to the launch to get our snacks so we get to the launch, we think we're just gonna be in and out, and we have a whole day of fishing left yet to catch more muskies is what we're thinking, because the weather was pretty good. It actually ended up being the best weather day of our entire trip. But when we got to the launch, to our amazement, Jason's truck window had completely been shattered and broken into, and we had been robbed. And they stole all of our luggage, everything. All of our clothes, our toiletries, our glasses, all of our luggage was totally gone. Even Jason's backpack for work was gone. But they didn't take his $200 cowboy boots. They didn't take his iPad. They didn't take his toolkit. They didn't take my uh, uh, one of my tackle boxes, which I was happy about, thankfully. But they took my raggedy, old, worn out favorite tennis shoes. They didn't take his boots, $200, but they took my shoes that were worth about $1.50 at a rummage sale. After talking with Jason's insurance agent, on the phone and all that and talking to the police, it was a long ordeal at the launch. We finally had to make our way to our hotel to check in because we had to put all of our fishing gear in the hotel before we went shopping for new stuff because obviously the window's busted out right now and it couldn't get fixed till the next day. So we couldn't leave our thousands, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of fishing gear, musky gear in an open truck. So on the way to the hotel, before we even got to our hotel, we ended up rear-ending a sweet little old lady <laughs> at this busy dangerous intersection i'm not making this up bless her heart she didn't press charges she didn't even file a claim and then right before we left she asked if she could pray for us she straight up prayed for us and it was just the sweetest thing so then we leave there and on our way to our hotel we see a homeless couple a young man a young lady and a puppy and even though when we got robbed, they took most of our cash that we actually had out of the truck, even though they stole that, I had a little bit of cash left in my wallet. And I said, man, what the heck? So, you know, they were obviously in more need than we were. So I gave them some cash. We get checked into our hotel and we have to head to the strip mall that's nearby. And we realized last minute that it was closing at 9 p.m. and it was about 8.20, 8.25 p.m. at this point. So we had to hit up about five or six stores in about 35 minutes. So we were running around like a bunch of crazy dudes. We got everything we needed, got back to our hotel, went to bed. Well, we were supposed to go to bed because we had to get up early and it was already late. Uh, but we ended up having another deep conversation about God and the Bible and whatnot. And we didn't go to bed till about 2.30 a.m. And we had to get up at 5 a.m. to go fishing. So obviously we had to go to Starbucks first thing in the morning. Day two was like a thousand degrees and super humid. Didn't see a single muskie. 
We did get a surprise visit from Agar, which was pretty cool. You'll see that also in the video. And then day three, it was even hotter. And at this point, Jason and I were just exhausted and tired and we really missed our wives and our kids. And we just wanted to get home. So we only fished until about 11 a.m. Shout out to Charles Wallace and Corey Allen also who hopped in our boat for a couple hours. Great guys, if you're ever in Tennessee, please look them up. Uh, ask them to take you fishing, they'll do a great job. So we had lunch with Charles and we said our goodbyes. And on our way home, we were only a couple hours into our drive. <laughs> And once again, Jason's truck broke down. And this time it was the alternator. We had to hike about a mile to an O'Reilly Auto Parts and the dude working there, Roger. Dude, you're awesome. Uh, Roger was really trying to help us out, but you know, he was kind of limited with what he could do. So Jason bought the parts he needed. We walked back to the truck. Jason realized he was missing a part. So he sent me back to O'Reilly. So I jogged up there quick. And right before I got into the store, I was walking to the parking lot actually. Here comes Roger with some tools and stuff. And he looks at me and he says, let's go, man. Hop in my truck. And I'm like, what? And he goes, let's, do, let's go, dude. I'm going to help you out. And I get in his truck and he said he was just telling his coworker, he's like, man, we got to help these guys out. Because we had told him our story. And he's like, we got to get these guys home. We, we got to get them home. We got to do something. So here Roger drives me down back to the truck. Jason can't believe it when he sees them. And these guys just go to, go to work. And it didn't take them very long. I mean, they had the alternator out and switched and they had the truck running in probably less than 45 minutes. So then we were back on the road, finally on our way home. Everything seemed to be going great. <laughs> and really up until this point, me and Jason were just happy, smiling. Man, we felt blessed. This trip was awesome. I know you're probably thinking, what? But it was amazing. I will never forget it and I would never change a thing. And we met a lot of wonderful people down in Tennessee. We had a lot of great opportunities. And I just thank God for all of it because it really made a good impact on both me and Jason. But um, we were almost home and a couple hours before we got home, I started feeling really sick. We stopped to eat a couple times and I'm pretty sure I got food poisoning. And so I got home, I hugged the snot out of my kids and my wife, and then I proceeded to puke six times that night. So yeah, crazy, eventful, fun, awesome. We got a nice fish, all of the above. I'm actually heading into a meeting right now. I missed work yesterday because I was so sick and I'm still sick, but I can't miss any more work. I got a meeting with Lowe's right now. Shout out to Lowe's. Um, this meeting is in, re in relation to my job at the Boys and Girls Club. Lowe's wants to help us out, so that's awesome. But I got to go, y'all. I got to get to work. I hope I can just make it through the day. And, uh, you know, I don't even know. We'll see you guys soon. Enjoy the video. Please watch the whole thing. And remember, y'all, just keep casting. What up, y'all? I'm here with the Broster. This is my good friend, Jason Brost. That sound you hear is his truck. <laughs> We're like ready for liftoff here. We're drinking some coffee, talking about taking dumps, because that's what guys do. But uh, we're actually heading down to Tennessee right now to go try to chase some Tennessee muskies. So we're really pumped. We've been talking to Corey Allen and uh, Charles Wallace. Some great guys, look forward to meeting them, getting on the water with them. But stay tuned, because hopefully we'll be catching some giant Tennessee muskies here shortly. Peace, life in the lead. <laughs> First time, two thumbs up. They were on point, I'll definitely be back. I don't know what tech they put in that sauce. I think they pray over it or something, anoint it with oil. But I'm definitely coming back to get some of that. So the journey continues, peace. Well you guys, 
wouldn't be a fishing trip without a little car trouble. You hear all them semis? Me and Jason were engrossed in a serious conversation. So serious that we forgot to check the gas. And we ran out. So I just ran a mile for the first time in a number of years. And I thought I was gonna die on my mission to get Jason gas. And then, I didn't die, thankfully. But then, my calves started to cramp up. But I made it. And now I'm walking, definitely not running. I'm walking back to the truck. And it's like 87 degrees outside right now. Jason's probably sunburnt, passed out, angry. You know how people get grumpy when it's hot out? And when you got traffic jam like this? <laughs> yeah. You see that old lady just waved to me? That was dope. But everyone's probably really grumpy right now. And they're probably looking at me like, what is this fool doing? Honestly, I probably looked a lot worse when I was running, you know? Just going for a jog on the interstate in my jeans when it's 87 degrees out, you know? Try to stay in shape. <clears throat> Clearly, I don't try to stay in shape because I could barely run a mile. And honestly, I think I'm exaggerating. It was probably like a half a mile, but let's just say it was a mile so I feel better about myself. Man, look at all these semis, dude. Oh gosh, look at all these semis. It's craziness. Man, we ain't going nowhere anytime soon. Sleep. It's 5.30 a.m. We're about to go chase some mussies. Got to get our coffee first, though. Rich bought me this. I don't know when my father-in-law bought this for me. Christmas? Birthday? I don't even know. But hey, it's my birthday in a couple weeks, so let's get a birthday musket. I was gonna say, for me, it's like four from my house. So do you two look pretty close to each other? 30 minutes. minutes? Yeah. Um, look at it! Got one! Got one! Turn the camera. Camera's on. <laughs> 